Steve here, Room for Woodwork. And for those of you that are new to the channel, this is a social experiment in woodworking in confined spaces. And my workshop is literally in the corner of the bedroom inside my home. And I'm working in an area of 1.8 metres from that wall to the end of the bench. And 1.4 or 1.5 from that wall there to the front of the bench. So it's a confined space, but I'm setting out to see if I can make furniture and pursue woodworking as a hobby or even as a small business within the confines of this space. Thus giving hope to all the people that live in walk-ups or apartments or flats or units or are boarding in a house and don't have much room. Now the brief I've been given is I can't make any noise or excessive noise. I can't make a lot of dust and I can't make any bad toxic smells with finishes or fumes or anything like that. So I've geared this workshop to working within those constraints. Now having mentioned that, I did promise the landlady, aka my wife, I would promote her latest creation. And this is what she did last week or finished it last week. She makes quilts and other things. And keep an eye out for her show too, which is coming soon called Crafty Old Women. All right, back to my show. And those of you that have been following me, you'll notice I've got a different picture behind me. And this frame here was actually built for Woodworking Masterclass down in my workshop. However, I'm going to be doing a very similar frame to this with a mirror in it shortly on Room for Woodwork. And this, by the way, was all done with hand tools. There was no machines whatsoever or power tools involved. All right. As I promised you last time, the next project I'm going to do is a shooting board. Now, shooting boards are very, very useful things, and especially if you're going to be working in an apartment or a small space, because you can true up a lot of your joints, but you're not making any noise because you're using a hand plane. I'll show you a few of the shooting boards that I've used over the years and shooting planes, and then we'll move on from there. This really is the Rolls-Royce shooting boards for my workshop. And I made it specifically for the Rolls-Royce in shooting planes, which is this one. A purpose-built shooting plane that's made by Veritas. And the idea is I've got a cleat on the bottom and that fits over my bench like that, as unorthodox as my bench is. And grab a bit of timber. Now, if I wanted to shoot this square, I merely hold it up to the edge of the board like that, get the shooting board, and you'll notice this has got a brass guide on it, and that's made for the plane, and it glides nice and easily. If you wanted to glide a bit smoother, get a bit of the old candle wax, a couple of rubs down there, and it'll glide smoother and quieter. Very nice. And all I do is put the board that I want to true up on the edge like that. And you can hear it, a bit of hiss and miss. And eventually we'll get a clean shaving all the way along. And there you can see that's nice and true. We'll just check it. You can see that's nice and square. If I want to shoot a 45, I put it in there, keeping with being quiet in the unit, rubber hammer. And then, same, same, I hold my job at that angle, which I've rough cut 45 degrees, and then I can shoot a 45 degree mitre like that. So there's various forms and shapes you can have. Obviously, you might not have a shooting plane such as this, so what you can do is just an ordinary Stanley, if you like. This is a five and a quarter, but you could just as easily use a three, a four, a four and a half, a five, five and a half, and whatever you've got. The only thing to be careful of is make sure that the sole and the side is at 90 degrees. If not, you won't be shooting a true shoot of 90 degrees. You're going to have a bit of a, a camber on it or a bit of an angle. So for this, obviously you can't use this board, 
because this board has got that brass track down there. So it'll dive the Veritas. Here's another one that I didn't make. Uh, a friend of mine called Michael Connors made this and it's a sloping board. Same principle. Difference with this is when you're actually shooting, being on a slope, your job is going downwards, so you're going to be using more of the blade as you cut, which is also an excellent idea. But the one I'm going to make is just a very basic one. I'm going to make a simple form of this without the track on it. And here's little ones you can use. Same setup, I can cut 45 degrees or I can do a square. And that's something I use, especially when I'm making boxes and I'll use my block plane to shoot. So that works just fine on that one there. Variations on that theme is this one, which is purpose built and it has 45 degrees there and 30 degrees there. And what I use those for is sometimes when I'm box making and I want to put some solid edging on the top or the bottom. And if it's a six sided box like this one here and these edges have to be cut so they can form the hexagonal, that's what I use this one for. But once you get the basic idea of how it's made, you can then do it for 22 and a half degrees if you want to make eight sided um, bits and pieces and I think it's 57 and something or other or something like that for uh, five sided items. But at the moment what we'll do is just a very basic one that'll do 45s and straights. Now an interesting thing I found the other day with this one, and I made this, I don't know, four or five years ago I suppose, was I used solid timber. Now solid timber is beautiful to use but what I did find it moves and I allowed for that with these screws when I screwed them in I put them in oversized holes to give this timber the ability to extend, expand and contract but what I didn't think of at the time was this end block which is actually if you can see that dovetailed in so it's free to sit there and this moves and contracts at the same time. And I thought, well, that'll keep it true because even though this is expanding and contracting, there's enough play here that it shouldn't knock this out of square, but it has. Because over time, this width has actually collapsed unevenly. And when I put a square on it, it's a fraction out. What I'm going to do with this one is actually make it out of plywood. And the reason being, two reasons, one, plywood is very stable and it won't move. And secondly, if you're living in a, a built up city or something like that, you may not have access to a wide selection of timber. And therefore, plywood most likely is going to be the easiest uh, resource that you can get hold of. The ply I use is birch ply and it's got more laminations than the cheap building construction ply. It costs a bit more, but believe me, if it's something you're going to make and you're going to keep, it is well worth the extra expense because there are no voids in it. It doesn't separate. It won't delaminate. It stays basically where you leave it and how you leave it. So birch plies to go and we'll start making a shooting board as soon as I clean this bench off. As I said before, when I'm working in this room, I've got to be tidy or I get in a heck of a pickle. Won't be a dick.